Hey guys, welcome to the Vendo podcast. Today we are uh, talking with Delaney and Hiram. Guys, can you tell us a little bit about what your positions are with Vendo? Yeah, definitely. Hi everyone, it's nice to see you again. Um, I'm Delaney and Hiram and I are both hybrid account strategists on the Vendo team, meaning that we work across both the Amazon and the Walmart business. Awesome. So with that being said, how do we share learnings with each other on the Vendo side? Is there a lot of cohesiveness between the teams? Yeah, there's plenty of cohesiveness between the teams. We have a weekly team meeting in which a lot of thought sharing goes on during those meetings. And we leverage different insights like uh, specific category and competitive data, also demand trends that we're seeing across a single platform because we're most likely seeing that same seasonality across the other platform as well. Um, and then mostly in terms of knowing and understanding our customer, I know that Walmart and Amazon both stress this as well as far as the demographics, what um, items they're purchasing together, what other items they may be turning to within the competitive landscape. Um, and some brands in which we manage on both Walmart and Amazon were able to utilize the other platform to give us some of those analysis on those trends. What are your thoughts, Hiram? Yeah, I think here at Vendo, we don't um, really separate like Amazon versus the Walmart team. Uh, we're definitely prided in just being one team. Um, and kind of to your point, we encourage each other to learn more about the respective landscapes, whether that's Amazon or Walmart. Um, so I think it's a good thing that we have these weekly Omni meetings just to ensure that everybody on our team really knows what's happening, not only in the industry, but um, like physically in the stores or like what's happening online too. Yeah, and what we've seen in terms of um, who leads, um, Amazon is typically the thought leader. Walmart has become more of the thought reader, leader recently in just their ability to move more towards a digital, uh, digital platform. Um, but we're getting a lot of our learnings from Amazon on the Walmart side and just seeing what could come down the pipeline for Walmart, um, given what Amazon has um, released in recent years. Awesome. Thank you guys for that. Um, so with that being said, what would you say are the key similarities and differences between both of those platforms? Let's start with the key similarities. Um, I could take this one, Delaney. Um, I mean, just in terms of key similarities, both are awesome shopping sites that have been around for a really long time. Um, as you guys know, Amazon offers Prime, which is an exclusive membership. And Walmart recently rolled out uh, Walmart Plus. Um, to kind of just compete with Amazon Prime. So some things that Walmart Plus includes is, um, you know, unlimited free grocery delivery, uh, scan and go in-store shopping, uh, even gas discounts. Uh, so that's one key similarity. Um, something super cool about Walmart Plus is that just in the first five months, they've seen 8 million subscribers. Uh, so we definitely are seeing traction there. Um, and then just another key similarity is I think their presence of marketplace sellers. Uh, this is what really fills the assortment gaps that aren't on like the first party channel. Uh, so that's something super exciting that we'll be talking about later in the podcast. Yeah, definitely. I just want to back what Hiram was saying regarding Walmart Plus. I know that um, this year, actually, Amazon increased um, their fees for Prime as well. So it's going to be interesting how Walmart can potentially take some of that market share if the consumer is looking for maybe a higher value subscription there. Of course, we know that Amazon um, and Prime, a lot of people use those services for things outside of just amazon.com as well. Um, but just looking at how that transformation is going to um, pick up for Walmart as well. Um, and then on the 3P marketplace, definitely agree with you, Hiram. Um, as Walmart starts to expand digitally, they're adding a ton more marketplace sellers. I know that they added, what was it, like close to 20,000 sellers um, over the last year, and they want to expand that almost double um, this next year. So the marketplace is definitely where they can close the gap. And for Walmart, there is a lot less competition right now than there is on Amazon, um, just given the breadth of the assortment. So it's going to be interesting how um, that transforms um, in the coming years as well. Um, great. And so then we can just lean into the differences between the two platforms now. Um, just real quick on my end for the biggest difference. I like to think that on Amazon, you're kind of competing against the algorithm. So it's all algorithm based, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. And then for Walmart, um, I think it, a large part of the experience has to do with 
your relationship with your merchant or your buyer. At the end of the day, they have access to like a suite of retail tools that allows them to really enhance the customer experience, the customer shopping journey. Uh, so definitely working with that merchant allows you to put your products, like your items in front of, you know, millions of eyes that uh, different Walmart customers are shopping on. Yeah, I agree. And that's kind of the function of the vendor manager on the Amazon side, right? But um, a little less ability to maybe pin or boost items in search and have that total control because you're looking at it from an omni perspective. And I think, of course, that is the biggest difference um, between Walmart and Amazon is that Walmart can leverage those stores and they are focused on being that top grocer. Um, Amazon with their Whole Foods business and Amazon Fresh obviously is trying to compete within that space as well. Um, but in terms of their curbside pickup and delivery services, I think Walmart is um, trying to leverage that even more so and leverage their physical pre presence and brick and mortar and lean into some of those insights to um, use walmart.com as more of an education station as well. Um, and then go to the stores, learn more about the products through um, walmart.com. And that's why they're valuing these content scores so much is because a lot of people when they're in the aisle in the store are picking up their phones and looking for um, looking on walmart.com for increased information. Yeah, I mean, well, so it sounds like the key similarities are exactly what the differences are as well, because they have things that are very similar, but it's in a different way. Um, so for brands, what's the onboarding process like? Are there any key differences there? Yeah, so I think you're looking at it in terms of if the brand is 1P or 3P. So if we're looking at it from like a selling standpoint, on Amazon, it's pretty easy to onboard as a seller. You pay the $40 a month for your professional selling plan, then you choose whether or not you're going to be selling FBA, FBM, or a combination of both. Um, and then it just turns to setting up your products, optimizing your content, shipping your products to the Amazon FCs, um, either through direct shipping, drop shipping, or potentially using a 3PL, and then building those advertising campaigns um, to promote your products. So the foundation is very similar. The biggest difference for Walmart is that you have to apply to become a Walmart Marketplace seller. So you fill out um, the application, send it in through Walmart Marketplace and you have to be approved by them. The great thing about Vendo is that we are an agency solution provider on the Marketplace so we can help you apply, resolve any potential errors that you're having with your application and also set you up for WFS, which we know Walmart launched in 2020, which is a direct competition for Amazon FBA. Um, so in terms of Walmart, there are no, there's no monthly fee to be a seller like there is for Amazon, that $40 fee. Um, but again, you're paying that referral fee similar to how you are um, on Amazon. So it typically ranges around 15% of your sales there. Right. Hiram, is there anything in addition that you'd want to add to that? I mean, I think Delaney did a great job covering it. Um, one thing that I do want to add is, um, when we break it down between like first party vendors and like third party marketplace sellers um, for a marketplace seller, anyone is open to apply both on Amazon and on Walmart, which is super interesting as opposed to uh, the first party experience uh, for both Amazon and Walmart, you need to be invited uh, to apply to this. Um, and then to just get a little bit more granular when it comes to um, Amazon, the one piece side of things, you do have a vendor manager that helps you throughout that process. Mm -hmm. um, same for Walmart, you have like the buyer or the merchant that I mentioned earlier. Um, however, if you're a marketplace seller and you're new um, to Amazon, you do have a success account manager. Um, and if, uh, you know, eventually later down the line, you still want to have that um, account manager, you would just have to pay for additional support. And Hiram, let's talk a little bit about reviews, right? Because we know that um, typically, we're trying to set all of our suppliers up to launch with strong reviews. Um, and actually, on Amazon, that seems a little bit more difficult at times than it could be on Walmart. So with Walmart, typically, there's different partnerships that Walmart has either with Yotpo, Bazaar Voice, where you can syndicate your reviews directly from your DSC site over um, to walmart.com. And you can make sure that all of those programs are set up before launch. With Amazon, we know that they have the Amazon Vine program in which they have Vine voices who you can um, have write these reviews, but also that might range on um, a little bit more of the expensive side. There's not that 
direct syndication from um, direct to consumer. So you're getting a completely new, fresh um, set of reviews. And of course, at Vendo, we also have review strategies um, to increase those reviews at launch. Um, and I'm sure you guys have heard Nick's podcast in which he's talked extensively about those strategies. So we won't get into that. Um, but I think that is one of the biggest differences, I would say, Hiram. Yeah, when I was learning about Amazon, it was super interesting to see that you couldn't syndicate reviews to Amazon from like your direct to consumer site, um, as opposed to Walmart. Um, as a shopper and just like a statistic, 80% of people look at reviews before they purchase their product. I know so, I do. Right, right. I mean, it's the, it's one of the most important like factors for conversion, right? So if let's say you set up an item on Amazon and it doesn't have any reviews, the chances of people buying it aren't as high as if you're on Walmart and you've already syndicated reviews. Um, so when I was learning about like the Amazon platform, that was something that um, was a little bit hard to believe, but it makes sense why Amazon takes that approach. You know, they're very vetted to um, understand how it is that like consumers like shop uh, with that certain product. Um, and then the way that the algorithm works is it's not enough to just have like 1000 reviews on your product. You need to continuously be generating reviews so that your items can like organically increase in search too. Right. And the next That's thing, also, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Leah. Also, talking about just conversion levers that you can pull, um, I think one of the biggest things that we saw in Project Glass, where both of the sites merged um, on the Walmart side, is the below the fold content just completely disappeared off the site. Um, Amazon is able to leverage A plus content. They released a new um, feature a couple, a month or so ago called the brand story in which that's a more mobile friendly experience right above the A plus content. So Amazon is gearing more towards that social media platform, having Amazon posts and looking more like a social media presence through their brand store as well. Whereas Walmart seem to take a different approach. Obviously, they were going through a lot of site changes and that below the fold content will eventually be coming back. Um, but that is a strong lever of conversion where you could also just give more information about your brand, um, explain the main benefits of your product. And a lot of the brands that we have at Vendo um, and that we help manage lean very heavily um, on us to help create some of that A plus content because we see the direct impact on conversion. Yeah, all like you hit all the uh, main like Everything. touching points. Yeah, absolutely. You killed it. The only thing that I would also add is um, ha having this A plus content and these brand stories, like one of the biggest things about it is um, SEO, right? So search engine yeah. optimization, um, adding these keywords um, and just this content um, allows your products to really continue to be boosted to the top. Uh, so that's another strategy strategy that Walmart, that excuse me that Amazon has that's leveraging these products to be pushed to the top because ultimately if a customer can't see your product they're not going to buy it right so exactly. which we call our page one ranking program absolutely and Delaney could speak more about that later but for Walmart um, once they do have this um, enriched content we will be seeing a lot more items boosted to the top if they are engaging in you know um, uh, below the fold content, um, having videos, like even, you know, the naming conventions behind a video um, plays a critical role in making sure that your items are boosted to the top. So those are all super important things to keep in mind when setting up and maintaining your items on both Amazon and walmart.com. Definitely. And not just in the front end, right, Hiram, like Amazon gives you ability to add keywords to the back end, which right now Walmart isn't tracking those keywords. Um, so from an SEO perspective, I think Amazon kind of has the upper hand there. Of course, we'll probably see that roll out for Walmart um, in a bit. But at the same time, they're trying to re-engage that shopper and then subscribe and save. I know, Leo, we're probably jumping around a little, but no, I mean, it's great. There's just, there's so many things to talk about because we're, you guys are hybrid account managers. So there's, there's so much to touch on and there's so much knowledge. So I'm very much enjoying this. Awesome. Yeah. Just subscribe and save. I know that Hiram and I talk about it. It's like, when is Walmart going to close that gap and try to re-engage their loyal customer? Just Amazon having that ability to increase those re, uh, those repeat purchases, bring the customer back in top of funnel and make sure that they are buying the product repetitively through their subscribe and save subscription business. 
Um, and we focus on that heavily, especially for some of the grocery brands we manage and some of the brands that, of course, um, you are getting repeat purchases every week or every month for a specific product. And that's something that Walmart um, has not implemented yet. But I think it's definitely going to start to come down the line, especially because Walmart plays so heavily into the grocery business. And especially now that Prime has raised their prices. So maybe that's something else that's going to tie the customer to Walmart as well. Um, With all that being said, how does innovation play a role in enhancing the customer experience for both retail giants? Um, I think this is like a two-prong approach when it comes to innovation. Um, I look at it as innovation within like fulfillment Mm -hmm. um, and then innovation within like the actual website. Um, So basically for Amazon, everybody knows that they're building, you know, these new technologies that just make the supply chain and the customer experience seamless, right? So whether it's like biometric payments, um, the Amazon Fresh grocery stores, even like the drone deliveries, that's all like futuristic things that are happening right now, right? And, you know, there's there's a lot more. Like I know that last year, Amazon invested $40 million to expanding its robotic use uh, just to enhance the supply chain and fulfillment side. Um, as for Walmart, it's a different story. Um, what they focus more on is like uh, the physical, like brick and mortar side of things. Um, so really designing the stores in a way that um, kind of reflect how the app is based. I know that the Walmart shopping app has gone through a lot of different updates, but when it comes to innovation, that's something that Walmart's focusing on. And not just from like a store standpoint, but um, as a Walmart account manager, I'm always on different line reviews where the buyers are asking for innovative new products that they could launch to market, uh, which is super huge. Yep, I agree completely with Hiram. I think it's for Walmart, it's all about engaging the shopper when they're at the shelf. Um, So I walked a store in Arkansas when I was visiting a couple months ago. And honestly, like you just want to be in the store. You're (laughs) always want to be in a Walmart. (laughs) Yeah. You're interacting with this innovation where you like there's like a glass wall and you could see the product through this wall, but the product isn't actually being seen. Um, And it's just creating such engagement for the shopper where I'm sure in beauty, like there's going to be eventually like you're going to be able to do like virtual try on in a store and just trying on all of these different um, avenues that Amazon can't necessarily do. Of course, they can start to implement that on their site and people can do that virtually but I think that's going to look a lot different. And I think even the Amazon four-star stores, I know that we have a few out here um, and Amazon just released that they're actually taking, um, they're actually closing a lot of those stores. Um, But that's just another way to get people in to touch and feel the product and to capture um, that consumer who is more so looking for that engagement aspect. But the great thing is on Walmart and Amazon and with Vendo, you can do that through your infographic. You can create that personal feel through your brand store. Um, and all of that experience can be transferred um, to Walmart, to walmart.com or to Amazon through the content that you produce. Yeah. yeah and I've Delaney- even seen, sorry, Hiram, I've even seen like on Walmart, you can choose your size model to go and mm-hmm. try on your clothing. You can, on the Amazon side, you can then also look at, for example, a piece of furniture and see where it fits in your house. So I was actually doing that with a TV the other day and seeing if it was gonna be the right size for my room. And then I was going on Walmart to see if this top was gonna fit me versus on the model, because usually we see model is five, eight wearing size small. And it's, it's different where it's, I see someone that is exactly like me. Yeah, that's literally what I was just going to say right now is that um, it's a super recent feature, but uh, to your point, Leo, Walmart just launched like the virtual fitting room, which is a step in the right direction, right? Because um, I don't really like to buy clothes online because you like at the end of the day, every brand fits differently. Mm -hmm. Um, So Walmart kind of implementing this like choose my model feature is super cool because you get to see like a wide range of sizes based off of like height, uh, skin tone, hair color. Um, I I love that that Walmart's doing that. So that's another piece of innovation that 
um, Walmart's definitely, you know, going in the right direction. Yeah. And then you just think about even the more basic stuff, right? Like we know how often people are using QR codes now. I know every restaurant I go to in LA, like you scan a QR code, you don't even look at a menu anymore. So in a lot of Walmart stores, you have that QR code experience and they're showing the review count and the star rating on the actual shelf. And it links directly to walmart.com. So even something as simple as that just shows why you should prioritize your walmart.com part of the business so much. I think we get some sellers who are like, oh, well, we know that 97% of our sales are going to come through brick and mortar. So they kind of look past walmart.com and they don't prioritize that content. But really for an education purpose um, and discovery, they are going to walmart.com and we're seeing those pickup um, today sales increase for almost all of our brands across um, the retailers. So it just shows the importance that consumers are shopping differently now. They're using online as an education source, and maybe they don't want to pay the $35 fee um, to get delivery, or they have to reach a $30 to $5 minimum um, to get free delivery. Maybe they don't want to do that if they don't have Walmart Plus. So they're going into a store to pick up the product. And when they get into that store, then you could just upsell them with other products because of the experience you're creating within the store. I think it's awesome stuff. Yeah, Yeah, I think it's awesome. So with all of that innovation, which retailer is leading the e-commerce space right now? And where do we think it's going to be at the end of 2022? Uh, I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, (laughs) Amazon is the leader in the space. They do about 25% of total e-commerce sales, like in in general. Mm -hmm. So I think where they can really close the gap, fulfillment, which Walmart has started to catch up with WFS, but that's the whole thing with Amazon, right? You get your products in a day or even same day. Um, and it just happens so quickly. They've built their fulfillment networks so that anywhere in the United States or even globally, like you can get your products fast with fast shipping and you know it's going to get there in an easy return process. Um, and I think the marketing opportunities is the second thing. We've started to see Walmart store start to play in that space. So for um, the three-piece side of the business, I know that they had released flash picks, um, which is basically a seven-day deal on Amazon. Um, but at, again, there's certain limitations with how much you can market on Walmart specifically. And I think they're starting to leverage that three-piece side of the business. But when are we going to see things like subscribe and save, lightning deals, coupons, Amazon Live, Amazon Post, or just any sort of like Instagramable um, social media experience, um, because that is really what Amazon is rewarding sellers for now. What do you think, Kyron? Um, I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's Amazon. When you came, when you talked about like the marketing strategies, like I always think about this and I think it comes down to the fact that like Walmart has always prided themselves with being like the cost leader. Um, so ensuring that every customer across America is receiving everyday low prices, um, both online and in their stores. Um, That being said, um, the reason that I selected Amazon as like the e-commerce like industry leader right now is when you look at the most important like key performance indicators, you see that Amazon's winning like all all the time. Um, For like the US market share, they make up 40%. Walmart only has 7%. When it comes to the amount of uh, third-party sellers selling on Amazon, it's over 6 million. Walmart, it's about 150,000 sellers right now. Um, just even like the countries that these retailers are shipping to, like Walmart is more than doubling. I mean, Amazon is more than doubling Walmart. Um, when you look at like membership um, growth and subscribers, it's Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Um, one thing I will say, however, is Walmart is growing. Um, it's giving Amazon kind of, you know, um, a run for its money. Uh, Just, you know, these past three years, you do see that Walmart.com's revenue has tripled um, while Amazon has only grown like 35%. So in terms of like that second part of your question, where um, I see them both ending in 2022, um, I'm optimistic. And I know some people think like Walmart will never catch up to Amazon. But for me, I do think that they can make more of a dent. Um, so instead of having all of this innovation, yeah, Leah, you need to shop on walmart.com more. That's, that's my biggest thing from this podcast. Um, (laughs) Hiram, if we also Hiram, if we're looking at it from like an advertising standpoint, right? 
we know that there's a lot of limitations when it comes to Walmart product targeting, negative keyword targeting. I know that Michelle talks about it a lot on her podcast and with Geffen, but just even in Helium 10 data, right? Like I know that we they released a beta for Walmart, but yeah. you could see search volume, high, medium, and low. Amazon, you could see the exact number of searches. It's just easier for a seller because they're providing you with this data that you can leverage on an everyday basis to optimize your business. And I think that's a big difference too, is that they're giving the sellers that data as well. Um, so for, I agree with Hiram, Walmart is definitely making moves and they're going to, um, they're closing the gap for sure. Um, in terms of where that will land, um, not entirely sure. I think Amazon is a beast of a business and it will be hard to catch up to them at this point. But I do agree that at it's almost dumb for you not to be selling on both platforms because yes. the competition, the, the customer is a bit different. Um, the competition is different. Trends can be different. Um, and the innovation is different. Sense. Exactly. It just makes sense. Gotcha. I mean, so to close off, do you guys have any advice for brands and retailers for launching on both Amazon and walmart.com? Um, I'd say take advantage of both platforms. I'd say that make sure that you have best in class content. Um, reviews are obviously super important. And just one thing that I always do when optimizing products is I put myself in the shoes of a customer and I ask myself, what you know aspects of this product page are going to allow me to ultimately make this purchase? So if you can ask yourself that and then conf confidently answer it, I think you'll be in a really good place um, obviously advertising is super important, but I don't recommend, um, coming up with an advertising budget and strategy up until you make sure that you have a good content score and you have a decent amount of reviews to make sure that your items are showing up organically. Gotcha. I agree with Hiram, but I'll just top it off with Vendo can help. So if there's any Vendo hesitation, <laughs> if there's any hesitation for either platform, just know that you have a team of specialists in every area here, marketing, advertising, account management, and our business development team um, is great at just really helping you understand what we can do at Vendo to give you those services and make Amazon and Walmart truly is easy for your business. Um, so there shouldn't be any hesitations. You're missing out on a ton of money if you don't um, join either platform and a ton of long-term growth as well. Um, so just do it. That's my advice. Just do it. I love that. Well, guys, thank you so, so much for your time. I know as hybrid account managers, you guys are very, very busy. Um, so I really enjoyed this and hopefully we can do it again soon. Perfect. Awesome. And this is yeah. Leah's first time on the podcast. So she's awesome. And it's great that everyone is able to meet her. Yes. Thanks, guys. Talk soon. Thank you. Thank you.